going to show you how to run a one-way repeated measures or within group ANOVA using Excel. It's kind of awkward in Excel, so I suggest you use SPSS. It's a lot easier, but let's do this. So here's the data, and these numbers represent the number of sexual harassment complaints from the big different companies. Here's Division 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And this is the number of complaints before the training. And then they brought in a uh, harassment training instructor. And they got four, all the employees got four weeks of training. And then the number of complaints were recorded after each training. And then there was a six month follow up. So we're going to run the ANOVA to see if there's a significant difference between these repeated measures. So we're going to go up to the data tab up here. And hopefully, you guys have got the data analysis at impact. There's a video around here somewhere that shows you how to get it, if you don't have it. You're going to go to data analysis. Get over here, you. So here's all the different statistic analyses that, S, or that Excel does for you. Now, this is where it starts getting weird. We're going to do actually do a one-way repeated measures within Group ANOVA. But in Excel, it's called... ANOVA two-way without replication. Click OK. OK, make sure you get the right boxes up here. So your input range, very important, you need to have the first column of numbers here. Say that again, you need to have your first column of numbers in the data set. So click into the box, make sure your cursor is blinking, and then I'm going to highlight everything You'll notice that I got the labels of the rows of the columns as well, right? The pre, the week one, week two. And I'm going to click that little box that says, I also have the labels in the database. All right, now I'm going to tell the computer where I want it. With the output range, I'm going to click, make sure my cursor's there. And I'm going to usually just put it right next to where the, uh, the data is. And then I'm going to click OK. So there's your data. I'm going to pull this over a little bit so we can see it a little bit more clearly. So again, like I said, this was awkward. So these are the summaries of the rows, right? These are the rows. So this is the sum of row one, all of these guys way across. That's what this is. There's the sum of row two. But we're really not interested in the, in the rows at this point. We're going we're gonna to use them um, to make comparisons. But we're going to let Excel do the heavy lifting. So, but these these are row column. These are row totals and sums, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And down here are the columns. Okay. So this is kind of what we really want. We want to see if there's a difference between the columns here. And here's their averages. So you can see some pretty big averages in there right off the bat. But now this is where it gets weirder. You're going to look at the ANOVA, but the one for the repeated measures is the columns. Again, we want to see if there's a significant difference between the columns. So this is your data column set that you're going to look at. Let me see if I can't make it pretty for you guys. Boom. Right? So your sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean squares. Your F is huge. It's 50. So your p-value, you guys don't recognize that, but that's scientific notation. What that means is is that there's 13 zeros between the decimal point and the 9. So in other words, it's 0 .00000009, which is less than 0 .001. And that's basically all you got to know there. And But what I do like about Excel is it'll give you the critical alpha. If the null were true, if the null were true, then, then your calculated F, that one, should have been less than the critical F, that one, and of course it's not. So, But that's how you do it in Excel. MGZ out.